what we're showing you now is what to do if the hardware does not initialize after the program starts up. So what I'll do here is I will launch the program and you will see it'll come up, give you some information, and then it will try to initialize the hardware and it should fail because I have it set to a very high COM port. So it says no device found, check USB connection. So I click OK, close the program, go to my device manager, go to the COM ports, and I can see that it is currently set to COM15. And we want this to be COM6. So I'll double click on this, go to port settings, advanced, open this up, go up to COM6, click OK, OK. That should reassign the port. Once the device manager refreshes, we can close that and then launch the program once again and it should now initialize properly. So go launch the program again. Okay, looks like it's having trouble again. Oh, there it is, it got it. So now I can see that it's pulling in real-time data from the sensor channel. Uh, right now I have a AlphaSense COAF sensor installed so I will put that information up here and I'll just call it serial number one and on here sensor type I'm testing a CO and in the types you have CO, H2S, the dual tox or Kosh, CO electrode dual tox, Kosh, H2S electrode, other meaning uh, you can test SO2 or chlorine or something other than what's in the list here. Uh, then you have your oxygen uh, 4 series and oxygen 7 series. So we will leave this at CO. Uh, in my gas concentration I'll adjust that to 200 because that's the gas that I'm using. Now I'll check my pass fail criteria these should be pretty close to what you what you need but you can adjust these so right now my baseline limits are these are in nanoamps so the pass fail for the baseline is plus or minus 200 nanoamps which equates to about 3 ppm uh, roughly now my span limits uh, I can see that it is set to 50 nanoamps per ppm as the and 100 nanoamps per ppm as the maximum so that, that's fine I can leave that alone so I'll go down here and I'll click on start test and it will ask me to verify the gas value which I did 200 is correct and you can make adjustments here if you need to but this should be what you had input so click OK it tells me to apply the calibration gas so at this point I'll turn my calibration gas on at a flow rate of a quarter of a liter to a half a liter per minute and I will slide the cal cover over the sensor now what you see is the sensor output being graphed in real time and what it will do is it calculates the sensor output in nanoamps per ppm this is the the uh, sensitivity of the sensor so now it also is calculating the live T90 so the value to 90 percent um, in seconds how long it takes to get to 90 percent of the current signal so this is a, this is now testing and once we plateau once the channel plateaus um, the software will determine that the test has gone on long enough and it will either pass or fail. So I can see that, okay, right there. Now it, it has failed the test and you can see here that the nanoamps per ppm is about 40 and that's much lower than our minimum of 50. Now the other thing that you can see here too is this long arcing curve, almost like a shark fin, uh, produced a 14 second T90. Now after you get some experience with this you'll see that this is pretty poor. Um, so what I will do now is I will remove the gas and let the sensor recover 
in ambient air. And now one thing I, I have noticed with the AlphaSense CO AF sensor is um, they take an awful long time to come back to zero. Uh, they usually hang out down around 2, 3 ppm for a considerable length of time. Now this may be an issue especially if you're using an automated manufacturing process where you, uh, you're using calibration docks or something like that where you're using the software to determine whether the uh, instrument is ready to go or not. You'll cause you to uh, incur extra purge time and uh, just adds to your cycle time that is really unnecessary. Now this is a phenomenon that I only see with the AlphaSense uh, sensors. Um, I have not seen this with City Tech offerings or uh, DD Scientific uh, either. So we'll just wait for this to now settle back down and you can see that the baseline um, is still around 10 parts per million and you know that's a lot considering you know you're gonna have workers looking at this instrument saying why is it not zero um, that that can be an issue with some companies so keep that in mind if you are planning to use this sensor so now this is now about 7 ppm and we can see we're coming up on 200 seconds of test time, um, about 100 seconds in the purge. So, you know, that's over a minute and a half and the thing is still not down to zero. So, you know, that's a concern. Um, later videos I will show you what a good sensor looks like and um, it's quite different. And you can see how this would impact any testing, um, automated testing and manufacturing lines, having to wait all of this extra time uh, for the instrument to get down to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just click on save test now and basically abort what's happening. Gives me now the summary of what has happened. Um, now these results are stored in this file. This is an appending file. Shows you the gas value, the serial number, the baseline nano amps, the sensitivity, the T90, T99, which is also very important. Uh, the end result and what the total gas duration time was. So click OK and then you can see that it opens up this file for you. Now not only does it take the time and date and all the basic parameters of the test, but what you have here is the tab delimited gas curve. So you could basically export this uh, data into Excel and do some graphing or some studies or, or make your own um, reports file from it. So that's nice. Now like I say this is an appending file so this will just continue to grow. So I'll exit that and uh, if I go to the graphing feature I can select the the graph um, here. I'll turn the graph on and now this is reading in uh, real time and I can select it to be either nanoamps per ppm or just raw nanoamps from the channel or I can select what is called the instrument simulation screen. Now this actually displays what the instrument would be reading and you can see that our simulator is about 3 ppm and that's what we have here. So now if I gas this sensor just in the raw mode, turn the gas on, put the cover on, you can see the sensor starts to respond and it should go up to the 200 value um, which is the gas concentration we were using in the prior test. So we will let that go up and this is a very good screen for uh, just doing some basic uh, evaluations of sensors just to see what the gas curve looks like um, if any strange anomalies are taking place during the either gassing or the recovery. Now at any time that you have a graph, you can also export this data directly to either the clipboard as an image or you can uh, select it to go to Excel if you have that installed on your computer. So what I will do is I will wait for this sensor to stabilize and I can see it's coming up to about 195 so we've, we've got a little bit to go. and then I'll take the gas off and you can see that your recovery again will be slow and although this sensor is responding it does have a, a uh, less than the minimum spec span value so it does fail for that reason but I would fail this sensor for 
extremely slow response time and recovery time is another reason I would fail this sensor. So go ahead and I'll take the gas off now and you can see uh, that the sensor will start to recover back down to hopefully zero. But we know with this sensor uh, it's going to hang down around four or five parts per million. So now that I have this growing here, what I'll do is I will right click on the graph and I will select export data to Excel. Now what this will do is if you have Office on your computer, it will launch the Excel application and bring the data in for you. So here we have the data. Now the, the sensor output data is here. And what I'll do is I'll just install a chart and you'll be able to see that it is indeed the same data that we were looking at. So this gives you some flexibility um, into what you can do with the data, with the software program and the hardware to get very fast um, evaluation data for many different sensors. So I'll go here and I will go ahead and shut the graph off. I don't need to be looking at that anymore. And I see that the current simulator reading is around 7, 5, 6, 7 ppm. So what we can do is go to tests. If we want to look at the last test data, select that. It brings up what the summary of the last test was. So we can see that uh, based on just about a minute's worth of gassing, the T90 was 14 seconds. The overall sensitivity span was about 43 nanoamps per ppm which is less than our minimum of 50 that we set here. Now typically the 4 series CO sensors have a span value of around 70-75 nanoamps per ppm plus or minus 20-25 so 50 to 100 is a good range uh, but you can adjust that based on the manufacturer's data sheet. And what's nice about this program is it is manufacturer independent. So you don't have to um, worry about is it the instrument or is it the sensor. This is an independent uh, measuring device, which there's no fudge factors in it. There's no um, un, you know uh, any type of algorithms for calculating um, predictive end readings. So basically, it is what you what you see is what you get, and as create a pretty damning document um, when you return sensors for credit or warranty re repair. So again, it's another tool that is uh, very good for the service centers and um, I will continue to update our video file with different tests as we go. But for now, I think that should do it. Thank you for watching and your comments are always welcome.